Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and I just got back from the new film Django Unchained. It is the latest film from Quentin Tarantino. It is about Django, a slave who is freed by Dr. King Schultz, played by Christoph Waltz. Schultz uses Django, played by Jamie Foxx, to find the Brittle Brothers, who are uh, three brothers who used to own Django and his wife, Broomhilda, as slaves, and then sold them off when they found out they were married to separate people because they're a bunch of jerks. Schultz and Django go off and hunt these guys down, then realize they like working with each other, so they become bounty hunters together, and then make a pact that after they do bounty huntering in the winter, that they will then go off and find Django's wife, Broomhilder, and bring them back together. Django and Chain has a lot in common with Inglorious Bastards, which was another kind of historical revenge genre pastiche kind of a film. And this is very much in that tradition. I think this has a lot more in common with genre, specifically spaghetti westerns, black exploitation, and also being a very entertaining film. This film is very funny. It's very fun. The violence is always presented in a fun way. It sets you up and is very quick paced at the beginning. So it really gets you into it. And much like Inglorious Bastards, sometimes it feels wrong and fun and bloody and gory. It's like everything you want a rated R movie to basically be. It was grindhouse kind of movies that Tarantino grew up with that everyone says were wrong and crappy. Tarantino, when he brings that entertainment, he brings the trash to it. But there's also a major intellectual level to it as well. It's not just trash for the sake of trash. There's an intellectual level to what he's doing with the trash, which makes it fun. There is a certain amount of Hollywood entertainment going on throughout this film but he's also doing it for a reason. What he's doing with the genre and what he's saying with it about racism and about kind of retribution for these things. Much like in Glorious Bastards where it totally sucks that we never found Hitler and killed him. With Django, he's trying to kind of find a revenge genre B fantasy with slavery in America. And also if you look at spaghetti westerns and black exploitation, if you fought the system, you would be kind of destroyed. And I think he's giving it more of an empowering sense to it. Because anytime any of these guys would be empowered in the old films, they'd be destroyed in the end. And Django is so much more hopeful. It's so much more fun. And I like that about Django. Django's story in this film is similar to Django played by Franco Nero in the original Django film. And that that's very much a revenge story. And I think Spaghetti Western, the Django character, is a revenge story. And he's using that story in typical Tarantino fashion. There's like so many different influences and, you know, ideas and, you know, different genres at play here. I often feel like when I see his films for the first time, I don't really see them. I feel like, you know, the second or third time, everything makes sense to me. But the first time, I almost feel a little overwhelmed, a little like, did I get everything? Like, I really feel like there was so much going on. On, like I'm thinking of one idea and the other idea I totally miss. Almost wish I was seeing it a couple times before I was doing a review because I feel like when you really want to get in deep with it, you have to have seen them a couple times. And because his films kind of lend themselves to multiple viewings, I'm sure I will see this again. I might see it in theaters again, I don't know. But that's also part of the fun, you know, having, you know, a Rick Ross song going on during a Western isn't usual, but that's kind of the fun of Tarantino is you never know exactly what he's gonna do and you never know exactly what genre Genre you're going to go into you know as much as this is a buddy film and a spaghetti western it's also a revenge film there's a lot of things at play so it's not just a simple easy thing to be like oh this is just spaghetti westerns I mean that's certainly a big part of it I think but that's not all of it this is kind of a different experience for me from other Tarantino films because most of the time I've seen his films I haven't seen the films that influenced it or as many of the films that influenced it as I have with this one because I'm familiar with Django I've owned Django on DVD for years. I'm familiar with Sergio Corbucci who seems to be a major influence on this film but there was still like stuff I, I wasn't really aware of. I had no clue that Mandingo was going to be referenced in this as much as it was. He has such an incredible knack for dialogue and I love hearing Christoph Waltz say his dialogue. I think there's not a finer actor I can think of for Tarantino's dialogue than Christoph Waltz. And what's funny about that is Tarantino is such a lover of the English language and loves the spoken word. And Christoph Waltz is German. I think he's better at speaking English than certainly even I am. I don't know many people who speak English who speak English as well as Christoph Waltz. It seems to like roll off the tongue like naturally Tarantino's dialogue when Christoph Waltz says it. Christoph Waltz was like born to say uh, Tarantino's dialogue. Everyone he casts in his films, I've never seen anyone he casts in his films that I'm really like 
upset by or insulted by it seems like everyone's almost perfectly cast like he rewrote all the whole film around that actor it just seems perfectly smartly cast i know a lot of people don't like that tarantino is in this film for a second he's not in it that much you know a lot of people think it like ruins the film and such I, I think that's being overly dramatic it was funny it was silly and he's not even there that much so you know if you went to the bathroom and came back you probably could miss him so you know if you see him and you really dislike it just go to the bathroom come back it's not gonna be a big deal I like that he got DiCaprio to play a villain DiCaprio is so like maliciously evil but he's almost like cluelessly evil like you can tell he's like the evil kind of a boss person who He's definitely evil, he definitely has the wrong intentions, but he has like a soul and a reason to him. The way, if you look at some spaghetti westerns, they would when they would focus more on the villain, they'd make the villain like an interesting, compelling character. Tarantino doesn't really do major characters that are just one-dimensional, you know, villains or anything. He makes them have reasoning behind them, even if their reasoning is crazy, like Calvin Candy. DiCaprio is just like really evil and a fun evil to watch. Franco Nero, I wish Franco Nero was in it more. I, <laughs> I really thought Franco Nero was gonna be in it more, but he's not in it that much. That's probably my biggest complaint. The thing about the Django character, Christoph Waltz's character, Schultz, seems to be the main focus of me as a viewer when I'm watching the beginning of the film. You know, he's the person who has the most dialogue, he's talking the most, I seem to be following him the most. Almost like Jamie Foxx's Django, he's, he's playing it very low key for a lot of it. It doesn't seem to me that until, you know, they get to the Candyland, and it really becomes about his quest to find Broomhilda, his wife, played by Kerry Washington, that he really kind of becomes the star of the movie. It feels like a lot of the supporting characters almost take over for him, and he just fades into the background like this mysterious cool guy in the back that you almost don't notice, you know. But Jamie Foxx is really good at this. And, you know, Jamie Foxx is an actor who, I actually do like Jamie Foxx a lot. I often find that he does kind of crappy movies. And when he had that big explosion, what was it, in 2004, and he was in Collateral and Ray, Ray wasn't so great, but Collateral, he was great. And he's never lived up to the potential that was laid out for him in that year. And when I was watching this, I was like, oh man, like Jamie Foxx is really like, come into his own with Django. He felt like a real cowboy, you know, he felt at home riding a horse, like an old Hollywood, you know, Western actor would that was trained with a horse. Well, there's a lot of fun to Jamie Foxx, but there's a certain coolness to Django. There is kind of a superhero ideal to the way this whole story plays out. And the original Django is kind of a superhero. It's very pulpy comic book idea. And the way Jamie Foxx plays it, he is kind of like the black superhero, Django Freeman, a superhero or comic pulp character, the way that Frank O'Nero played his Django. And Jamie Foxx seems to get that in his performance and be able to play the cool, slick guy who's good with his guns, who can, you know, let all these guys give their like long-winded Tarantino soliloquies that we're used to and just chill out. You know, he's not given the cool dialogue that Christoph Waltz and DiCaprio and Sam Jackson all are, but he seems to be able to be comfortable with that and still be the star of the movie. I like these kind of entertaining, fun, B-genre romps that Tarantino has been doing, kind of like writing the wrongs of history in a way, which is fun. He's facilitating something that history never accomplished. Even though it's taking on serious issues and taking on slavery and taking on a lot of stuff, it's still a lot of fun and it's fun violence. And I think Tarantino gets why an audience, like why you root for the Avengers to win and why you root for you know anybody to win in the third act, you want that villain dead. I think he carnally understands that and it works within these revenge B genre films and he's able to let go of kind of the genre conventions and really let you have a good time. He can weave all these different genre conventions and you never know what to expect, but he seems to be able to weave them in a way that is able to satisfy an audience. The way Tarantino directs these films is mainly concerned with entertainment and that makes it a lot of fun. It goes into why he's making these to give you kind of an awesome revenge fantasy, but give you something you can root for at the end and be like, yeah, that's awesome that he killed those slave owners. Yeah, that's awesome that he killed Hitler. And giving you kind of that satisfaction that history is not necessarily giving you. And that's an awesome time at the movies. And I think Tarantino gets like, why you want to go to the movies? You want to leave like, yeah, the hero did it. I want to do a little spoiler section specifically about the end. Yeah, so if you haven't seen Django Unchained, don't watch after this. But if you have, I guess you can keep watching. So at the end of the film, when Django, he gets Broomhilda back and everything, the interesting thing about that, and I think the empowering part about it, is that 
you look at a lot of black exploitation, you look at specifically the original Django and a lot of spaghetti westerns, most of the time the hero things don't really work out exactly as planned. I mean, in the original Django, he gets his hands stomped on in most black exploitation. If you go against the man and really fight back and really change things, you're going to end up dead. I mean, that's usually what happened. It always sucked when that happens. You're always like, what? Oh, man. And that was never any fun. And it seemed like a little bit when everything fell apart for a bit that maybe he was going to go back to that even though I was like oh well that's typical of this genre and typical of what you'd expect especially from the time period the 60s and the 70s when they're making films like this that Tarantino's referencing in this film what he does is taking it and making it more like the three act gives it more of an empowering feeling that empowering feeling you get from your typical three act film so if you have seen Django Unchained and you would like to talk about it then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to so if you enjoyed this review, I also did a review of the original Django, and you can check that out right now. It is already up.